Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Uh, I have three wines in front of me from two different countries. Uh, I probably shouldn't do uh, mix Portuguese and Italian wines, uh, but um, one of the reasons I think I do it, uh, or I think I've done it, well, two reasons. One of them is that I didn't have enough Portuguese or Italian wines to, uh, uh, to flesh it out to a complete video. But the other thing is, I think of, I use this term Italianity. Uh, there are often grapes that they'll, they, they, there will be familiar grapes that are planted somewhere in Italy. They acquire an Italian accent. Uh, and it's the soil and the winemaking speaking. And I'd say the same with Portuguese, in the way that there is Italianity, there is a Portugosity about the wine. So um, uh, maybe a bit of a fudge, but uh, hopefully it's going to be a rather tasty fudge. Uh, so I'm starting off with the two Italians, uh, both from Tuscany. First one is uh, 2010 Vignetti Trebio, um, and it comes under the Toscana IGT, mostly Sangiovese, uh, the main grape of Chianti, Brunello di Montalcini and all that lot. Um, quite a bit of Syrah, I think it's like 60 Sangiovese, 30 Syrah, um, and then the other rest of it, I think they've got Cabernet Franc, I think Merlot, a bit of um, Petit Verdo in, even in there. And some of it has been fermented in amphorae, um, you know, clay things. Not sure how much. So yeah, I, I had, a, had a quick look and uh, see what I could find out from the literature. Some of it said about, about 10%. Anyway, let's see whether that has an effect. Give it a whirl. Dusty warm cherries. Uh, there is a relaxed, mature feel about that. By mature, I mean uh, what I what I mean is it's shed some of its youthful perkiness uh, and is in this round, confident middle age. It's only three years old, um, so it's not it's not aging. It's not looking tired by any means. But um, yeah, it's shed some of that puppy fat and seems to be in a rather well, smells like it's going to be a rather attractive early middle age. Supple, juicy. Um, it's got that spicy cherry kernel character of Sangiovese, uh, and then it's got these warmer, dusty, earthy characters that are almost more, what I think of almost like Spanish uh, dustiness in there. I don't know whether that's coming through from the amphora bit, um, uh, but uh, what I like about it, sometimes when they do these Tuscan blends and they put um, uh, they put other grapes in there, particularly if they put a bit of, uh, of Cabernet in there, the Cabernet tends to take over a little bit. Here, it feels like you're, you're getting that Sangiovese, um, yeah, good rusticness, rusticity, um, and... Uh, it's it, it's one of those that I want to glug. Uh, it's it's come out of it was it came out of a cool cellar about an hour ago, so it's had a chance to warm up a little bit. But it's still on that coolish side. But it's it's nice and fresh, and it feels like there's no hard tannins there that need to uh, uh, be ironed out. Um, it's really tasty wine, and as you will see, my spittoon has not been used. That's how tasty it was. Let's see whether the second one is uh, going to be uh, similarly tasty. This is um, Chianti Classico Reserva uh, from Tolaini. Uh, and uh, so we're in the Comune of Castel Nuovo Beradenga. Uh, let's give this a whirl. Same vintage and quite similar characteristics. Um, uh, well, some characteristics the same. There's this dusty, warm cherry character, um, but it's that cherry kernel uh, here, 100% Sangiovese, um, so none of the, uh, the, the the syrup and all that lot. It feels like there's going to be uh, an extra depth, uh, extra layers of flavour. The first one was maybe, simple's the wrong word, but um, it, honest, rich, juicy wine. Here, it feels like one of those that's, uh, that's got layers and layers of flavour that need to um, uh, properly uncurl in order to uh, if you see uh, all that it's got to show, uh, it smells really good, and it smells. Um, I mean, Reserva. It will. They'll. They'll have done a regular uh, Chianti Classico. The Reserva will have been in oak for that little bit longer, uh, but uh, it doesn't feel like oak aging has muddied any freshness of fruit or liveliness of fruit. Well, that's pretty tasty. Um, what um, compared with the the first one is uh, uh, easy drinking is the wrong word, but um, uh, user friendly. Here, it's one of those that you sort of sit there and go. Mm -hmm. And then layer after layer of flavour uh, kicks in. So you're getting the fruit. Uh, you're getting the a little bit of um, vanilla tinged character from the oak aging. Uh, but then you're also getting this minerally character coming through from the soil. And it's this nice mixture of quite rich fruit uh, with freshness and um, yeah, this cool minerality that just just comes through, polishes your mouth out, makes you want to think, uh, makes you think, I want some more of that. Uh, so I'm going to have some more. Very smart wine that. Uh, lovely. Uh, yes, I mean that t the, the tannins are there and uh, are going to keep it in good condition for uh, a good few years. Yeah, but 
um, the freshness and uh, freshness is fresh and soft. Can you have fresh and soft fruit? What I mean by that is there's no uh, overripeness or jamminess in the fruit. Um, but the fruit flavours uh, are all rounded, uh, fully ripe, not overripe. And uh, there's, uh, yeah, there's just this polish and, and juiciness and richness and... Uh, Whoa, I like that. I like, I like both of those. Let's see if I, if I uh, we do uh, just as well when we head over to Portugal. We're in the Douro here uh, for Cedro de Noval 2009. Uh, not labelled as a Douro table wine because it's got about 30% syrup in here with the uh, familiar Portuguese grape varieties, the Turiga Nacional, Turiga Franca, all that lot. Um, interesting, I had the two days ago, I had the 2008 of this, so it'll be a nice comparison. And we're away from the, um, the the cherries here into those plums, black currants, blackberries, and um, there feels to be a warm, woody, spicy character here, here as well. Um, uh, it feels like it's going to be a richer wine, maybe not as um, a fresh and refreshing as the previous two, uh, but uh, feels like there's an honest, warm heartiness. Again, very tasty. Um, interesting. It's, it's, it's um, uh, the 2010 uh, for the two Italians. 2009 here. But it feels younger and perkier. Um, uh, uh, in, in it, it is a fuller bodied, fuller fleshed wine. I'm not sure alcohol wise. Uh, oh no, the, the, the Trebio is 14%. Um, the next one's 13 and a half, and this Cedro is probably 14. Uh, blah blah blah, 14%. So not really too much difference in alcohol. What I notice here, maybe not the freshness of. Um, uh, 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 well, th there's nothing like Sangiovese here, but what it has got uh, to uh, to freshen it up, it feels like they picked their, their their fruit early enough uh, to get fruit natural fruit freshness. I don't I don't, I don't know if they I don't think they'll be acidifying here, uh, but uh, they what they've then done is uh, polished it nicely, so done good elevage, uh, enough elevage to uh, soften out the gorky edge, but not too much that the the fruit has lost its 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 perkiness. Uh, so a year older and from a warmer region. Uh, it's like different wines for different occasions. Uh, I mean, the, the, uh, here, uh, this, this, there's a certainly, uh, certainly a warm, wintry feel about this. The Tolaini, I'd, I'd, I'd be very happy to drink uh, on cool summer nights and uh, uh, with, uh, yeah, a cold roast beef or something like that. But uh, all three of them have, uh, have been, I've, I've loved them, really, really enjoyed them. Uh, and I get to the end of a tasting like this, and sometimes it's, it's, it's obvious which wine I want to drink tonight. Honestly, with these three, uh, I think I'm going to have to have a glass of each one, which is no real hardship when they're so good. See you soon.